Here at Michigan Family Wellness, we believe chiropractic care and nutritional-based therapies are a foundational part of a healthy family lifestyle. No matter where you're at in the mitten, having a family is such an exciting time of life. So instead of feeling overwhelmed by stress, fatigue, and responsibilities with the kids, we invite you to become part of this empowering community to create happy, healthy families. By providing engaging interviews and practical applications, Dr. Wallner cultivates family health by equipping our listeners with the tools they need to elevate wellness in their own family. Dr. Wallner passionately serves the Michigan community at his chiropractic and nutrition-based practice, where he specializes in pregnancy, pediatrics, and family wellness care. And now, here's your host, Dr. Kyle Wallner. Welcome back, families. It's 2017. I'm excited to be back behind the mic. Let me tell you what, we have some incredible interviews and content lined up for you this year. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Dr. Kyle, and this is the Empowering MFW Family, and we're so glad to be with you today. The health of you and your family is your number one priority. It is literally your greatest asset. The best way to have a healthy family is by living a family wellness lifestyle. So if you're looking for efficient, effective, and sustainable ways to elevate your health and the health of your family, then I strongly recommend you make yourself comfortable because we have an amazing show for you today. And before we get to today's episode, let me say a few words as I do each and every week about Power Performance Gym. Power Performance Gym is dedicated to helping you achieve your best definition of healthy and strong. Power Performance specializes in strength and conditioning for individuals, small groups, and athletic teams, weight and pain management, as well as recovery and nutrition. Everyone at Power experiences a full movement and health analysis to build your blueprint for success targeting your goals. Mention the Michigan Family Wellness Podcast to receive your movement and health analysis as a complimentary gift. Learn more about how Power Performance can help you move, look, and feel better by visiting powergym.com. That's P-O-W-R-G-Y-M dot com. Dr. Gabby is a leading expert on holistic medicine, author of Blissful Business, TV host at the Health and Wellness Channel, and expert wellness blogger at Huffington Post and SheKnows.com. Dr. Gabby has traveled to 40 countries, worked with thousands of clients, including celebrities and high-profile people, and has more than 2,000 hours of training in yoga, bodywork, meditation, and energy healing. Dr. Gabby is the founder of Women in Wellness and has more than a decade of teaching experience under her belt at top universities in mind-body medicine and holistic health. Her expertise is regularly featured in national and local media, such as MSNBC, The New York Post, and U.S. News and World. All right, families, let's jump into today's interview. Welcome, families, to the interview portion of today's podcast. I'm honored to be joined on the show today by the beautiful Dr. Gabby. Welcome to the podcast, Doc. It's so great to have you. Thanks for having me. Love your podcast, by the way, Doc. I've listened to some of your episodes. I highly recommend it. We'll actually plug it here several times and have links in the show notes. But families, you need to check out the Women in Wellness podcast on iTunes and really everywhere podcast audio is acceptable as accessible. And Dr. Gabby, I am excited to jump into our discussion today on how you help women, mothers, and families elevate their health and wellness and especially how you help women create their dream career in this health and wellness space. But before we head there, there are two questions I've always asked every guest on the show. So help our listeners and myself get to know you by telling us what family looks like for you. Well, family for me is any kindred spirit that shares the same values and mission that I do in life. So I'm surrounded by healers and yogis and wellness coaches and I consider all of my clients and students and coworkers to be part of my extended family. Absolutely. You know, that's a common theme here on the podcast. Family doesn't always have to be, you know, blood related. It can be the people just that are abiding with you in community and serving one another. So thank you for that. I love it. You know, another thing, Doc, I love to say on the Michigan Family Wellness Podcast is that we are smitten with the, let's see if I can do it here, the mitten. Okay. So have you ever experienced the Great Lakes or anything that the mitten has to offer? 
<laughs> not personally. I have friends from that area and I find them to be very kind and credible, but I haven't been there myself. Outstanding. Yeah. You know, I love um, being down there in Florida. I visited, you know, uh, that whole part of the country. It's beautiful. It's sunny, you know, especially with all the snow that we're having this time of year. But, you know, we're looking forward to possibly having a white Christmas. So we're excited about that. So, all right, Dr. Gabby, let's go ahead and get more in depth because I really want the women, mothers, and families listening to benefit from your experiences, your expertise, and your unique perspective. So, Doc, oftentimes I find what makes these conversations so relevant and so powerful for our listeners is just briefly getting a better understanding of your story and what led you to become a doctor. So, kick off our discussion here by sharing your journey into the health and wellness space. Well, I don't think my journey was uh, very conventional. (laughs) <laughs> when I was a teenager, I wanted to be a supermodel and an actress and a dancer and a painter and all the creative things. And I graduated from high school and I moved to New York City to pursue that and discovered really quickly that uh, the whole industry, the arts and entertainment industry, was pretty empty. Uh, there was a lot of drugs and a lot of eating disorders and body issues and So I ran away pretty quickly (laughs) and decided I had to figure out something else because, you know, it was fun to be doing something glamorous, but um, it just wasn't a healthy lifestyle. So I went back to school and I studied psych and I thought uh, a traditional kind of psychotherapy path. But then I discovered all the holistic therapies when I was in college, like massage and, you know, all those magical and I fell in love with them and I just couldn't get enough I was just study 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 I went to massage school yoga trainings energy medicine meditation and just kept exploring and exploring exploring and then I decided to do my doctoral research um, about women healers so I interviewed women healers all around the world like practicing indigenous medicine shamanic medicine asian medicine uh, energy medicine and uh I had a lot of questions for them about what it was to be a healer versus a doctor. Uh, Cause I think there's a difference. I think there's a paradigm of Western medicine where you go to someone and they have the power and they have the knowledge and they fix you. And that's typically, you know, interve- interventions like medicine and surgeries and things like that. And then I think there's healers and the healers define themselves as someone who's not doing anything to you, but who's just holding a space for you to do self healing and, uh, and providing natural tools, whether it's breath or, or touch or food to help, you know, facilitate that process. So then I started teaching. I've been teaching for 10 years about holistic health and mind-body medicine and uh, coaching and healers about how to build a practice and uh, be successful healers. So it was kind of an interesting journey. <laughs> You know, that's incredible. And just to circle back to what you were saying there, because I loved, and this is why I wanted to, you know, bring you on the uh, platform here in interviews, because you talk about, you know, letting that person kind of heal themselves, you know, or going to someone that has knowledge and expertise, and then, you know, transferring that value to that person, to that patient, and then allowing them to express their health. And I think that just so resonates with, you know, from a chiropractic perspective, it's not about me. It's, about removing that nervous system interference for that person and then allowing their body to express the health that it's trying to express or to heal a specific target tissue or, you know, any part of their life. Uh, And they do that on their own. You know, I'm just getting, I'm just helping them get themselves out of the way essentially. So thank you so much for that. And you know, doc, listeners of the program here are used to hearing me talk about the benefits of the, you know, like a family wellness lifestyle, if you will. And you know, how chiropractic plays into that and everything around that. But you know, doc, there may be someone listening today who, you know, may be crazy stressed out, who doesn't want to rely on over the counter meds for the rest of their life and who wants to be able to spend more quality time with their family. So to start off with, you know, what are some of the benefits, you know, that you've picked up along your own journey and your own expertise, you know, of this wellness lifestyle? Really define that and articulate that for us. Well, to me, everything I do is about wellness. So, you know, first thing in the morning when I get up, I immediately put some kind of either music or 
video on that gets my mind on the happy train. Like, how am I going to have a good day? What am I going to do to have a good day? And, and, and set my mind in a positive place so that I can benefit everyone that crosses my path, right? And then about, you know, taking care of my body and eating something that's, that's healthy and nourishing and then going to a place and doing work that is fulfilling. Like I have incredible healers and coaches and things that I work with that are part of my wellness. They're part of my career satisfaction and fulfillment and well-being. And then moving my body, finding ways to move my body. I'll go to uh, dance or yoga or walk in the park or something. I'll cuddle my cat and I'll feel that connection to animals and to nature and and so on and so forth, journaling, what, I mean, just on and on and on. And to me, it's all directly connected mm-hmm. to my well-being. I, and, and sometimes things come into my world that knock me off. You know, sometimes negativity comes in or some kind of, you know, unexpected disaster <laughs> comes in. Yes. And then I just have to you know, grab all my tools, grab my positive friends, you know, grab my community, and I have to get back into the mindset of wellness. So to me, it's like physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, environmental. Um, it's, it's, it's everything about my life, you know, so. Outstanding. You know, I couldn't agree more, Doc. You know, just, just to kind of summarize, would you say that, you know, there's, there's these components of, you know, moving well, you talked about the exercise and the movement that you do, the thinking well, you know, and the eating well, you know, eating well, thinking well, moving well, I think those are great things to start with. You talked about the spiritual component of that, which I would definitely agree is a uh, imperative component. And then just to really kind of round out, you know, that major value bomb you just dropped on people, that's all describing resiliency. Would you agree? Define resiliency for us. You know, what yeah. do you think about resiliency? Um, resiliency in general for me is the ability to bounce back. It's like how fast can you get back to well-being? So Mm -hmm. if someone criticizes you, if you trip and hurt your body, if you lose your job, if you go through a breakup, like how Mm -hmm. fast can you get back to feeling good? and to feeling alive and vibrant and healthy and happy. Like how fast can you get back to that? And I think if you watch kids, they can like fall down and scream ah, and then they're like back in right. a few seconds to right. like be joyful. And then I think as you watch as, you know, as kids get a bit older and maybe they get a little bit bullied or, you know, they're not doing so well in school it's a little bit harder. It's like, it's, it's more work to kind of mm-hmm. get back to jo- being joyful. Yeah. And then as adults, I mean, some adults that I see with chronic illness, chronic pain, chronic life problems, it's like they get in this feedback loop of negativity or pain or resistance. And, um, it takes a long time and a lot of work to go back to joy. So I think that the more that you have joyfulness as a daily practice and the more you're mindful of all your thoughts and all your actions and how it's it's keeping you close to wellness then the stronger your resilient your resilience is it's like it's like exercising a muscle absolutely yeah couldn't agree more i mean you know this is something we talk a lot about on the platform here on the podcast you know it's this whole idea of you know you said it perfectly when something new or a new stress comes into your life You know, are you able to adapt to that stress? Are you able to handle that new challenge? You know, and are you able to respond really essentially? Because here's the thing, Dr. Gabby, at least the patients that I work with, the patients that I talk to, you know, to a certain degree, we can eliminate bad relationships. To a certain degree, we can eliminate, you know, a bad job. To a certain degree, we can eliminate, you know, stressors in our life. But On the other hand, there's only so much you can really do. This stress in our lives isn't necessarily going away. What I really think the the wellness lifestyle, the family wellness lifestyle, you know, the coaching that you do, you know, chiropractic adjustments, all of this relates in terms of helping people increase their resiliency to that stress. You know, you're going to be able to rest, digest, recuperate, build, repair, think, and create much better at, at an elevated level 
which I would even argue, I mean, gosh, you talk about levels. I mean, that's just really, in my opinion, like normal functioning of life. I mean, we have this like lower level of functioning and we're just trying to get back to a normal state. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think our normal state is well-being. I think our, and I think that, you know, sometimes if the train goes off the tracks and it's going through the woods, it can mm-hmm. seem like, it can seem like life is not about well-being. It can seem like life is about struggle and life is about work and life is about suffering and it can, it can seem like that. Um, I think the natural state is just flow. It's just the breath coming in and coming mm-hmm. out unimpeded. It's emotion coming in and out unimpeded, unimpeded. It's, it's just flow. And I think that you know, all these interventions like chiropractic and acupuncture and massage and all these interventions are designed to open areas that are not flowing and get it flowing again. And I think we can do that for ourselves. We can be our own healers and we can open up areas that are not flowing. And, and, and when we're a bit stuck, we can go and we can get some treatments and get some support and, and have other people help us to do that. Absolutely. You know, we were not designed to be sick. And I just feel so passionate, you know, about that one fundamental idea. And hence, you know, everything with this platform and the clinic and, you know, getting in touch with fantastic guests, you know, like Dr. Gabby here. So Dr. Gabby, you know, to kind of transition our discussion here, for those who are interested in transitioning their passion for a wellness lifestyle, you know, into a career or a business, what does that look like? You know, do you have any frameworks or resources to help women do that? Yeah, that's my current passion. I spent 20 years in the wellness industry working in alcohol and drug treatment centers and hospitals, clinics and yoga studios and universities and um, I've had a really amazing career and a lot of cool adventures and I have all these students that are coming out of different trainings, uh, yoga trainings, health coaching trainings, uh, selling products, creating retreats, writing books. And I really felt like it was time to teach what I had learned and mentor them and, and help them to create a practice and to spread the good news of wellness and so that's what I've been doing. I've been focusing on coaching and mentoring and teaching other healers how to take their wellness obsession and turn it into a career. And there's unlimited resources available. I have a podcast like this, Women in Wellness, that has 75 interviews and a book called Blissful Business that's on Amazon that has hundreds of exercises that you can do and a community, a supportive community that you can join to have conversations and meet like-minded people Um, And I really think that, you know, when we lift others up, everything rises. I don't think that there's a need to feel any kind of competitiveness. I think that in the spirit of, of helping everyone, we can really collaborate. We can work together to, to share this information, even if it's just writing an article or, you know, working at the local health food store. There's so many ways Mm -hmm. to impact people, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, Doc. I mean, one of the things I say on every episode of the podcast here is that we can do far more together than we could ever do apart. So I just really resonate with what you're saying there. And, you know, Doc, just in the context of, you know, our our listenership here, our audience, you know, could a woman who wants to start her own business use the, you know, blissful business resources? Uh, is, Is that relevant? Or maybe could a mother who wants to exit the corporate America framework you know, to spend more time with her kids, you know, benefit from this as a resource. Is that relevant or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the book and the community and the podcast and everything is designed to create a safe, supportive space and give you a roadmap to doing this because you can get really good at your craft. Maybe you're great at making raw vegan snacks or maybe you're great at doing body work or adjustments or something. But just because you're good at your craft doesn't mean that you have the skills and the resources to put it into a business and to make a living doing it. And so that's a certain skill set. And it's not necessarily something we learn. I mean, even if you just go to college, you might learn a lot about, you know, your area that you love, but not necessarily how to do it as a job. So really, that's what I bring to the table is this expertise about taking whatever you're really excited about and figuring out 
can I do this online? Can I do it face to face? Can I get a job doing this? And find ways to, to really be able to do it as a career, uh, which I think that we need healers and light workers and coaches and stuff right now more than ever. We have crazy epidemics and obesity and mental illness and depression and, mm -hmm. and substance abuse. I think we really need to step up and, and, and heal the world. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I couldn't agree more. That's why I went into the chiropractic profession. You know, um, there's just a, it, it's not that I feel like we don't need the medical model, which we do. I mean, it can save your life. I mean, gosh, if you're in an emergency, if you're in any kind of a car accident, God forbid, you know, but that will keep you alive, you know, in those emergency cases, you know, but honestly, for health, for well being, you know, the things we're talking about here today, the diseases of lifestyle and affluence, you know, the pharmaceuticals, the medications, the cut and burn approach is really not going to keep you, um, you know, creating a legacy, you know, adding years onto your life, you know, and adding years onto your uh, time with your family as well. You know, and just to kind of circle back to your resources, I think for, you know, the women, mothers and families who are trying to transition, like I said, you know, from that maybe corporate America framework or who just want to, you know, they're so passionate about this lifestyle, I think, you know, if, if they're busy with their kids, their regular nine to five jobs are not fulfilling or they're too stressful. I think creating a personal wellness business, you know, could be one of the most liberating things that one could do in order to live the lifestyle that they truly want to live. You know, would you say that this is the essence of the Blissful Business Book? Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because just because you work in wellness doesn't mean you're healthy. Right. <laughs> so... Yeah, I have a lot of women um, as clients that have left corporate and have transitioned into wellness. And, you know, not only do you have to teach the principles, but you also have to practice the principles. And I think that's why it's so important to be part of a community and to have mentorship, because it's just as easy for me to be a workaholic teaching and doing wellness as it is if I'm in finance or real estate or law or something else. So, Really, there's like, there's a certain lifestyle that you have to do as an entrepreneur if you're going to, I mean, you have a practice, you have a podcast, you have all these things, you know, there's, there's not just the teaching and the sharing, but then there's also the work that you have to do to maintain your own health and wellness in the process. So yeah, absolutely. Making these transitions is great, but so when you make the trend, there's a lot of things you have to learn about being an entrepreneur and maintaining mm -hmm. that self-care and the work-life right. balance and all that kind of stuff. To make it efficient, effective, and sustainable, really, is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sustainable is a great word. Beautiful. Well, Dr. Gabby, one purpose of the Michigan Family Wellness Podcast is to be an audio library resource for people looking to learn more about elevating their family wellness and increasing their resiliency. One of the ways we accomplish this is by asking our guests for practical applications. So, Doc, in the context of today's discussion, what can the women, the mothers, and families listening today start doing right now as a result of hearing your unique voice to elevate their health and family wellness lifestyle? Well, I think that people need to have more fun. <laughs> I, this sounds... A little off topic, but I don't believe it's off topic mm -hmm. because one of the things I did for myself last year is I joined like a comedy improv group and I, I learned comedy improv for a year and I performed on a stage and I acted so silly and I felt so many blockages and so many inhibitions and so many stressors leaving my body and I really started advocating more and more for clients, friends, family, everybody to just have more fun. Once you get into the flow of joy and having fun, a lot of the things that you're stressing and you're worrying about and you're trying to fix and trying to change, a lot of that is going to come more naturally. Doors are going to open unexpectedly once you really get into that flow. And I really think that the more fun we have, the more well, well being we can, we can create. So especially with the holidays <laughs> and the new year and making your, plans for your family and your career try to also drop into joy and, and be joyful during this time absolutely couldn't agree more and dr gabby where can people find more about you uh you can 
come over and hang out with me on my website. It's gabrielpolici.com, which is probably difficult to spell. So you can also go to women-in-wellness.com. It'll take you to the same place. And there's podcasts and blogs and books and all kinds of things there. So I also do free discovery sessions. If anybody wants to have a conversation with me, there's a button you can click on it. And we can talk for 20 minutes about what's happening. And I love, love, love to have conversations with people about wellness. Fantastic, Doc. Well, families, the book is Blissful Business, available on Amazon and iBooks. The podcast is Women in Wellness on iTunes. And like we said, everywhere podcast content is accessible. Her name is Dr. Gabby. Doc, you have brought the value today. Thank you for giving back and becoming part of the MFW family. Honor and appreciation to you. Thank you so much for having me. So what'd you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. So if you would like to email me about anything you've heard on this edition or any previous edition of the podcast, my email is drkyle at michiganfamilywellness.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Michigan Family Wellness, Instagram at Michigan Family Wellness. My Twitter handle is at Dr. Kyle Walner, and please take full advantage of the Family Wellness Lifestyle Audio Library at michiganfamilywellness.com. Have a great week, families, and remember, we can do far more together than we could ever do apart. Now that you've been equipped with the latest in family wellness solutions, we want to encourage you to apply these strategies right away. But the thing is, there's still so much to learn. Connect with Dr. Walner's chiropractic and nutrition office by going to michiganfamilywellness.com and click the newsletter sign-up button to join the informative and supportive community of chiropractic wellness. You will also receive as a gift from Dr. Walner a copy of Michigan Family Wellness Solutions, an invaluable resource containing dynamic tools to elevate family health and vitality. Michigan Family Wellness wants to thank you for being part of today's podcast. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and give us a five-star rating and review. 